Today we are learning about vector addition, so how to add vectors together and find a resultant vector. Um, so examples like this you might have seen before and you might find them quite easy. Um, so if we had five kilometers traveling say east and another 10 kilometers traveling east, well then we can just add them simply together. So five plus 10 is 15. And so the resultant vector would be 15 kilometers in, this, in the same direction, in the positive direction. Here we have one where we've got five kilometers in the positive direction and then 10 kilometers in the negative direction. And so that is sort of like saying you're adding negative 10. And so five take away 10, it's negative five and that negative indicates the direction. So the resultant vector would actually be going in the negative direction. Okay, but what if you had an example like this, where we had 10 kilometers traveling north and then five kilometers traveling east? How would you add them together? Um, in this case, we actually turn them into a right angle triangle. And so the resultant vector is shown here by our dotted line. Uh, this right angle triangle hopefully will take you back to maybe year 9 maths where you learnt about Pythagoras. And so we can actually find the magnitude and direction of this vector. So Pythagoras theorem states that the square of any of the two sides that's not the hypotenuse will equal the square of the hypotenuse. Okay, so hopefully this is reminding you of your, of your year nine maths. And so we have found that the length of this or the um, magnitude of this resultant vector is 11.2 kilometers. Okay. We can also find the direction of that, of that vector. So it is important if we're talking about vectors, if we're talking about a resultant vector, it doesn't just have a magnitude, it has to have a direction as well. And so this is where it gets a little bit more tricky and we need to use some trigonometry. I'm just gonna redraw this same triangle up here so we can see it more clearly. Okay, so because the resultant vector is going in this direction here, we actually wanna find an angle and the angle we wanna find is this one here. So I'm just gonna call it theta. Okay, as you would in, in mathematics as well. Now, when I was doing maths and I was doing trigonometry, um, I was taught the Sokotoa, and I was always taught it this way, and I've never forgotten it, and that is that some old hags can't always hide their old age. And I've always remembered that. And so the S is standing for the sine rule, um, C for cos, and T for tan. And so this is saying that um, the sine of the angle is equal to the opposite side to the angle, which in this case would be here, over the hypotenuse. Now, because we've actually found the magnitude of this side of the, the triangle, the hypotenuse, technically we can use any of these, any of these rules. Um, but I always tend to go back to what we were given at the beginning. So in this case, we have the opposite side and the adjacent. Adjacent means directly next to the theta, next to the angle that we're trying to find. And so that means we're gonna be using the tan rule. So, tan of theta is equal to the opposite over the adjacent sides of the triangle. Um, to get the tan of negative 1, um, or essentially you're dividing by tan, to get that in your calculator, you want to press the, your shift button and then tan. I'm just going to round it to 27 degrees. Okay, so now we have that this angle here is 27 degrees. The resultant vector is equal to 11.2 kilometers. 
that's just the magnitude. Now we need the direction, okay? And so the direction is from north, 27 degrees towards the east. Okay, and so that's how if we have two vectors that can be put together in a right angle triangle, always remembering to attach the, um, the head to tail of the two vectors, then we can work out the magnitude using Pythagoras and we can use um, trigonometry to work out the direction of the vector. I'd like to go through another example with you because sometimes when we do this, the angle that we end up with actually isn't um, the resultant direction. And so this example will show you that clearly, hopefully. Um, so here we have an example, a car traveled 10 kilometers west, then five kilometers south, determine the resultant vector. So the first thing we wanna do is draw a diagram so we know where, we're, where we are heading. Um, because this is very similar to the example that we did before, Again, using the exact same Pythagoras, we would actually end up with the same answer here. This here, this um, magnitude of the resultant vector would be 11.2. And the angle that we're trying to find is going to be this one. It's giving us the direction. So again, using our Sokotoa. Again, because we have all three measurements, we could use any of the rules, okay? Um, I'm gonna use tan again, um, again, going back to our original um, values from the question. Now, this angle here is 27 degrees, but that is not the resultant vector's direction. Okay, so what we want to imagine is that there's a little um, north, south, east, west, I'll do it in a different color. We want to imagine that. Okay, and so our vector is traveling, we can write this two ways. It's going west and then 27 degrees towards the south. So we could write that as to the south or we could do it as a bearing. And so as a bearing, we're actually looking for the angle from north all the way around to the vector there. So that would be 180 plus this angle here. And we can calculate this angle by going 90 minus our 27 degrees. And so that means that we could also write it as 243 degrees as a bearing. Okay, now this is just showing you direction. So always when we're showing the answer for the resultant vector, we give both magnitude and direction.